This incident occurred during a road trip I took on my way back from visiting my family for the holidays. I'm not usually one to embark on long drives, as I much prefer flying. However, this year, the airline tickets to my destination seemed unusually expensive. A round-trip flight to a nearby state would have cost me over $1,000. So, I decided to plan a road trip instead. I had meticulously arranged everything to ensure I'd return home a few days before I had to get back to work. Unfortunately, a snowstorm unexpectedly hit on the day I was scheduled to leave, forcing me to extend my stay by an extra two days before finally setting out on my journey. The roads were desolate as the holiday rush had passed, and most of the route took me through less populated areas. The greatest challenge during the drive was battling sleepiness and monotony. The first eight hours went by without any significant issues. Although I was tired, the snow-covered roads kept me alert and focused. It was around 10 p.m., and I had a hotel reservation in a small town just two hours ahead. However, as I continued driving, I noticed a faint light in my rearview mirror. It was the headlights of a vehicle approaching from behind, the first car I had seen on the road in over an hour. The approaching lights grew rapidly larger, indicating that the vehicle was closing in quickly. Soon, I could make out that it was a sizable van of some sort. Since the road was only one lane, I couldn't move aside to let them pass but I assumed they would overtake me, given their high speed. However, when they reached the rear of my car, they matched my speed and remained behind me. After a few seconds, it became apparent that they had no intention of passing me. We continued driving like this for almost 10 minutes. The situation felt unsettling, considering it was just the two of us on the road. And yet, this large van was tailgating me so closely that I couldn't even see their front. As I continued driving, I couldn't see the van's bumper or license plate in my rearview mirror. Maybe I was being too quick to feel uneasy about the situation, but an exit for a gas station appeared, and I decided to take it, hoping that the van would continue on the road allowing me to put some distance between us. However, as I veered off the highway and down the exit ramp, the van stayed right behind me. I pulled into the gas station and parked at one of the pumps. And to my alarm, the van pulled into the pump right behind me. At this point, I just didn't know what was happening. Part of me thought that something was wrong. Well, another part of me believed I might be overreacting. I knew this was the only gas station I'd seen in the past 30 minutes, so it wasn't entirely unlikely that they needed gas too. Before getting out to fill up my tank, I shut my car off and looked around the gas station. Part of it had its lights off, with a closed sign hanging from the door. As I glanced to the sides of the station, I saw nothing but empty darkness. No houses, no other buildings, just a snow-covered field with a single road cutting through it. I checked my rearview mirror and noticed a man standing outside the van, filling it up with gas. So I got out of my car and began doing the same. As the numbers on the gas meter slowly ticked up, the man quickly finished pumping his gas returned the pump, and sealed his gas cap. I glanced over, observing him as he walked to the back of the van. That's when I heard a loud, ratcheting sound. The back door of the van was being lifted open. In that moment, something, perhaps a gut feeling or instinct, told me to get out of there. I pulled the gas pump out of my car, and not even a second later, Three men were sprinting towards me from around the back of the van. I dropped the pump on the ground and hurried
hurriedly got back into my car, locking the doors just as one of them grabbed the handle and attempted to rip it open. I was shaking and moving as quickly as I could to start the car. All three of them went around, trying each door. But then, they immediately sprinted back to their van before I even had the chance to pull away. When I did finally start driving, I saw them speed away, heading in the opposite direction from which we had come. I reported the incident to the police, but I never received any updates or callbacks. It's clear to me now that they were attempting to abduct people under the cover of night on that vast, unpopulated highway. What's truly terrifying is how confident and, for lack of a better word, professional the whole operation seemed. It was as if they had done it many times before. I shudder to think about what might have happened if they had managed to catch me. However, I implore everyone to learn from my mistakes, because not everyone may be as fortunate as I was. Back in 2019, I worked as a delivery driver for a pizza place near my school. I often worked after my classes to make ends meet, covering my car expenses and rent. It wasn't a glamorous job by any means, but it kept me afloat through college. This particular night started like most others. I clocked in at 6 p.m. and delivered pizzas for three hours straight. After a quick lunch break, I resumed my shift at 9.30 p.m. I picked up the next order and started heading to the destination. The address didn't look like a typical house, and the route it led me on was quite unexpected. It took me further away from town, away from homes and stores, and into a business center. It was an area filled with small office buildings and nothing else. I followed the GPS directions, as I couldn't discern any addresses along the way. Eventually, I arrived at the front of a building where I could read the address, which matched the one on the order. However, something felt off. The parking lot was completely empty, not a single car in sight, and even the street lights were turned off. The office building itself showed no signs of any activity. I double-checked the address, thinking there might have been a mistake, but everything seemed in order. I even tried searching on Google for nearby places with the same address, but found nothing. This was the place. I put my car in park and got out, looking around before approaching the glass door with a dark tint. I knocked and took a step back, waiting. The door opened after a moment, revealing a middle-aged man in very casual clothing. He had a small grin on his face and seemed unusually excited. He mentioned how happy he was that the food had finally arrived and that everyone was hungry. I glanced behind him, but saw no one else, only a single light shining in the middle of the hallway. I ignored the oddity and politely told him the total for the order. However, he must have sensed my hesitation as he quickly explained that everyone else was in the rec room on the third floor for a company party. I offered a smile and accepted the cash he handed me, along with a $10 tip. As I took the money, the man asked me for a favor. He wanted help bringing the pizzas up to the third floor. I felt caught in a strange situation, having already accepted the generous tip. It seemed like the right thing to do, but at the same time, carrying a few pizzas didn't seem like a daunting task, and it certainly didn't appear necessary. Without waiting for my response, he began walking toward the building, troubling to answer yet, but I urge everyone to pay close attention to what happened next. The man continued to beckon me to follow him as he made his way to a door leading to a stairwell. I hesitated but eventually followed him into the dimly lit stairwell. As I entered, I felt a cold rush of air, and I noticed that all the lights were off, leaving only the faint glow from the hallway to 
illuminate the entrance to the stairs. The man started climbing the stairs, but he stopped when he realized I hadn't continued following him. He turned back, making a lighthearted comment about the lack of lighting. However, his grin quickly vanished when he saw that I wasn't willing to go any further. Without hesitation, he rushed down the stairs toward me, anger evident in his eyes. In a moment of panic, I dropped the pizzas on the ground and darted out of the door, sprinting down the hallway and making a beeline for the exit. I saw the man partially emerge from the front doors before retreating back inside and slamming them shut. I immediately called the police after reaching a different parking lot. By the time they arrived, the man had vanished, and since he had paid in cash, there was no way to identify him. The office building appeared to be empty, and there was no one else on the third floor. It was evident that it was some sort of trap, but what he had planned for me on the third floor remains a mystery, and I hope that no one ever has to experience it. In another part of my life, I worked for my dad at his small construction business. He operated a yard and warehouse filled with materials and managed job sites where the workers were assigned. Since I was only 17 at the time, my job mainly consisted of being a gopher. I would drive materials back and forth and pick up anything needed on the job. Depending on the project, some materials had to be delivered before the workers arrived so they could start promptly in the morning. Every once in a while, during busy weeks, I had to start work incredibly early, often around 2 or 3 a.m., to ensure that I could drop everything off on time. Of course, this only happened during the summer when I wasn't in school, so I had no excuse not to work. I actually enjoyed making early deliveries because it was quiet and I didn't have to deal with anyone micromanaging me. On one particular day, I arrived at the warehouse at 3 a.m., loaded up, and set out for a job site. It was a repair job on an old, possibly abandoned building at the edge of our town. When I arrived, I noticed a truck parked right outside. Its lights off and no signs of anyone nearby. It felt eerie, like something was amiss. It was indeed too early for anyone to be working, and I hadn't expected to see any cars parked there. Nonetheless, I parked my truck and approached the mysterious vehicle. It was apparent that it wasn't a company vehicle, as its windows were tinted, making it impossible for me to see inside. I turned my attention back to the building trying to see if there were any signs of activity. I called out, asking if anyone was inside, but received no response. A sense of unease began to creep over me. I decided to pull out my phone and call my dad. It rang for a minute and then went to voicemail. Assuming that the truck was possibly owned by one of the workers and that they had left it there, I went back to my truck and began unloading the materials. It took about an hour to complete the task. Once I finished unloading, I got back into my truck and started driving away from the area. However, as I glanced in my rearview mirror, I was startled to see the truck's lights suddenly turn on. I nearly slammed on my brakes, pulling over to the side of the road. I watched in alarm as the truck started to back out of its parking spot confirming that someone had been inside the vehicle the entire time. The fact that the person in the truck hadn't responded to my earlier calls was unsettling, as it seemed clear that they weren't a worker. I sat there, nervous and unsure of what to do, while the truck maneuvered its way out of the parking area and onto the road. I quickly dialed my dad's phone number again, hoping he would answer. As I waited for him to pick up, I glanced over and saw that the truck had stopped right next to me. I felt a shiver down my spine, 
Realizing that someone behind the tinted window was likely staring at me, I tossed my phone onto the passenger seat and started to drive forward. But the truck swiftly matched my speed. Trailing closely behind me, the situation escalated quickly, leaving me trapped between the trees on my left and the obstructing truck on my right. Panic began to set in as I shifted the car into reverse, attempting to retreat. However, the truck mirrored my actions, tailing me closely until they tapped the rear of my car. The impact sent me careening off the shoulder and crashing into the side of a tree. The truck came to an abrupt stop at the top of the road, as if the driver were about to exit. However, their brake lights suddenly extinguished, and they shifted back into drive, speeding away. Just seconds later, another vehicle pulled up alongside the road, and a man emerged, rushing over to check on me. At the time, I didn't know his name, but he was one of the workers arriving at the job site. He had only witnessed the tail end of the incident, but recognized the truck as belonging to Samuel another worker my dad had hired a few months prior. It turned out that a significant number of tools and equipment had been disappearing from the job sites over the past several weeks. My dad had suspicions that Samuel might be involved, and this incident seemed to confirm those suspicions. We reported the incident to the police, who launched an investigation into the matter. Thankfully, I was physically unharmed but the experience left me shaken and wary of early morning deliveries to remote locations.